The launch of the James Webb Telescope marks the beginning of a new era in astronomy. Webb will expand and challenge our understanding of cosmology, planets, and the origin of life. What began with hope has turned into a debate. James Webb has surprised scientists. Will the crisis worsen now, or will a new discovery by the James Webb Telescope end the debate in physics? The discussions about old theories and who is right or wrong could temporarily end. But what does this mean exactly? Have scientists really unraveled the mysteries surrounding James Webb's impossible discoveries, or are they simply giving us flimsy explanations? James Webb was supposed to bring solutions, but instead, the $11 billion project has plunged cosmology into a major crisis. All areas of natural science related to space are currently experiencing a shakeup similar to the shift from the geocentric to the heliocentric view of the world in the Middle Ages. We might now have to acknowledge that the foundations of our modern physics are also flawed and that we haven't come closer to understanding what our cosmos truly is. But how is this possible? Modern astrophysics, the science of physical quantities and relationships in the cosmos, is based on the basic rules of physics that essentially date back to ancient researchers, the Middle Ages, and particularly Sir Isaac Newton. The first observations of mechanics and dynamics were made in antiquity. Quantities and forces were first described, and later Newton discovered gravity, which is so important for astrophysics. We built our scientific observation of the universe on these foundations, transferring the quantities and forces that were valid and observable on Earth to the universe, which produced consistent results. But then, the visible universe grew larger, and at some point, our known quantities no longer fit to describe what we see. This crisis began with the problem that different methods for measuring the age and expansion rate of the universe lead to contradictory results. Local measurements based on astronomical objects within the universe gave different values than early universe measurements based on cosmic microwave background radiation. We know this dissonance as the Hubble tension, where the Hubble constant indicates the universe's expansion rate. In the summer of 2022, Webb discovered so many ancient and highly developed galaxies in space that doubts arose about how the universe's age was determined. Our cosmos can hardly be 13.8 billion years old, if thanks to Webb, we see galaxies that were already well-developed 200 million years after the Big Bang. According to our physics calculations, galaxies need billions of years to grow. For the galaxies discovered by Webb, this would even mean that their formation occurred before the Big Bang. Our old cosmology, which states the universe began with a Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago and has been expanding since then with a slow process of matter evolution, cannot be correct. We are at a crossroads. Either we are wrong in thinking that our terrestrial physics can apply to the entire universe, or we have so far deciphered only a small part of the physics that truly exists. The ancient scholar Hermes Trismegistus once said, as above, so below. According to this maxim, all the physics that exists in the cosmos should also be found on Earth, but perhaps we have overlooked forces and dimensions on our own planet that we are now noticing in the cosmos. Webb breaks all records. It's fantastic. This telescope can capture extremely faint light signals. Webb's 18 honeycomb-shaped mirrors effortlessly detect light that has traveled through space and time for over 13 billion years. A special exposure method makes these faint traces of light visible for the first time. Thanks to revolutionary new technology, we saw the light of the most distant galaxies that formed shortly after the Big Bang for the first time in the summer of 2022. These galaxies were a sensation and at the same time, a bitter disappointment. Instead of baby galaxies, Webb shows perfectly developed galaxies that seem to be several billion years old, but with an age of 13.5 or 13.6 billion years. This can never be the case. These days, scientists sometimes say that the objects in the images are impossible or not real, but Webb can only show us the truth. Science must now admit that it has probably been on the wrong track for over a century. That is roughly the age of our standard cosmological model. What we see here is real. Webb works perfectly. It's something much of our science is still unable to accept, new truths. Some of the old traditionalists who don't want to face these new truths vehemently oppose the end of the Big Bang or the idea of expansion. In the Middle Ages, it also took many years before the Church was finally willing to admit that the Earth was not the center of the universe, even though there was suddenly a mass of evidence from astronomers all over Europe. So it seems not much has changed. And although today we consider ourselves much more modern, we have a similar scenario. Researchers who proclaim something new may no longer end up in jail like Galileo Galilei. But disputes among researchers and hostility towards new ideas still exist. 
Imagine spending your whole life researching and firmly believing in something, and suddenly you see images or another side of reality that tells a different story. Maybe your mind would also rebel against this at first, and it would take you some time to accept the new truth. As everywhere, there are some who adapt faster and others who take longer. Many young, open-minded scientists are excited about Webb's discoveries. Rohan Naidu, the discoverer of the Galaxy Glass Z11, and Steven Finkelstein, who discovered the Ma Galaxy, belong to this generation of open-minded researchers. They look at Webb's images with an open mind and have been studying them since their first release. Both astronomers have repeatedly emphasized in interviews that we simply cannot know what will happen in astrophysics right now. We have to wait for more measurement results, studies, and of course, the latest images from Webb. It was Hubble's fault. Let's take a look at the debate. One of the great debates in modern cosmology concerns the Hubble constant. It is the rate at which the universe is supposedly expanding. In the 1920s, astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered that distant galaxies were moving away from us. From this, he concluded that the universe is expanding. This idea was later expanded, and Belgian astronomer Lemaitre postulated that this expansion originated from a single point, the Big Bang. Today, we already know through alternative methods that the movement of galaxies can also be explained differently, and these approaches also offer a coherent overall picture. However, they were ignored for a long time because the old theories were considered more probable. But the more we see of the universe, the more discrepancies arise. This didn't start only with Webb. Even 20 years ago, there were regions in space where the expansion behaved differently. It was as if these regions were sometimes faster and sometimes slower, or perhaps denser or emptier. This led to speculation that there may have been several starting points, or that our universe is even permanently fed from several sources that not necessarily all began at the same time or at all. Again, alternative ideas about the universe's shape, nature, and age arose but researchers continued to cling to the old theories of the Big Bang and expansion. Possibly this was a mistake. We've already briefly met the Hubble tension. In short, it shows clear differences in distance measurements in the universe, depending on which fixed points we use as measurement constants. Now, scientists hope that the Webb telescope, as its mission progresses, can resolve this tension by performing precise measurements of galaxy distances and redshifts. This could correct errors in previous measurement methods and pave the way for new, advanced physics. In the end, all researchers have done their best to find explanations and theories and have advanced humanity's knowledge of the cosmos. Therefore, we should not talk about blame, but look forward and be glad for each new discovery, even if it initially seems unknown or even shocking. New theories and alternative explanations are on the rise. We are probably at the exciting beginning of a new science. Then new research on these oldest points of light could show us if they are accretion disks or jets from supermassive black holes and what surrounds them. Then we would have to revise our cosmology and find out if black holes played a much more important role in the universe's formation than previously thought. A theory pointing to this comes from the British scientist Roger Penrose, who believes that the universe constantly recreates itself in cycles and that black holes could somehow survive such transitions as giant storage units of information. Penrose published this theory long before Webb's launch, but even though the Briton is a renowned researcher, his work was not accepted. That is changing now. Webb's mission has barely begun. We already have a second deep field image and the discovery of a very old structure so large that it doesn't fit into the young universe either. This evidence is growing. We still have to wait and see what new images from Webb will reveal. The telescope not only explores the young cosmos, but also works day and night to complete our knowledge of exoplanets discover new worlds, shed new light on our solar system, and capture images of the most massive and beautiful structures in the cosmos in unprecedented detail. Each of these observations in the universe is ultimately a piece of the puzzle that completes the overall picture. Even the measurement data of exoplanets can broaden our focus on the big picture and give us important clues about unknown forces, anomalies, or previously unknown phenomena. There must be something like a basic matrix, and our scientists are looking for its sizes, numbers, and structures. Thanks to Webb, a revolution has begun that continues to provoke unrest and debates, but we can reasonably hope that the crisis will bring us a bit closer to the truth. Subscribe now. Many exciting videos are coming.